Hi everyone. This is Anshula Jain and welcome back to Techie Anshi. In this video on my channel, we'll build a business dashboard. This dashboard is aesthetic and also has a lot of different elements that usually a professional would like to have on his or her business dashboard. So if you like this dashboard and also this video, then please don't forget to hit on the subscribe button. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. To begin with, let's connect to our data source, which is the Sample Superstore data. This is our very favorite accelerator that's available as part of our default Tableau ecosystem. So you can use this for creating your dashboard. Let's go ahead and add a new sheet. I'm going to use the Sample Superstore data as I mentioned. I'll pull in the profit onto the text. Let's edit the label and add in the profit. And I'll just also edit the sum of profit and increase the size of this so that the KPI is more prominent over here. So the size of it is now 12 and it's bold. Uh, and I'm also editing uh, the font of profit. So once this is done, you can center align this and fit this to an entire view. With this, our very first sheet, this is ready called profit. We'll go ahead and duplicate the sheet. And here I'm just going to replace sales on top of profit and also edit the text over here to call this as total sales. Apply and click on OK and let's call this sheet as well as total sales. Let's duplicate again the same sheet and here I'm going to pull in the quantity like we did earlier and again go ahead and edit the label to call it as total quantity. Hit on apply and OK and then let's just rename the sheet as well. Let's add in a new sheet for our Sparkline KPI for which I'm pulling in the sum of profit onto the row shelf and the order date onto the column. As you can see by default, you'll see years. I'm going to go ahead and add this to a filter and I'm only interested in looking the latest and the previous year. I'm pulling the year as well onto our color shelf and change the column value to show us month. As you can see, we have two spark lines, one for 2021 and one for 2022. You can fit this to an entire view and both the colors indicate that. Now I want to make sure that the previous year is in a gray shade. However, the latest year is in a black shade. And let us also ensure that there are no grid lines in this because this is a spark line. We don't need any grid lines or the Y axis. So I'm just going to hide the grid lines remove any of the axes or markers and make sure that my columns is formatted and it shows me the value of the months in very abbreviated format. You could change this and have it in the way you like. I just want it to show in the format like how you see it right now. Next, let's also go ahead and make the X axis bold. Which I'm changing the font from Tableau Book to Tableau Bold. As you can see now my x-axis is bold and my sparkline is very clear. I want to also show the higher and the low points on my sparkline for which I'll go ahead and create a calculation. I'm calling this as min max for which I have a simple formula. Sum of profit is equal to window max sum of profit. Then we'll call this as a max value else if the sum of profit is equal to window min of sum of profit then this is a minimum value else nothing so we'll just put an any over here and end this statement now we'll create a dual axis chart using the sum of profit synchronize the axis and hide the header once this is created we'll just format it to make sure that there are no row dividers and no column dividers on the second marks card for the sum of profit, we'll change this to a circle. As you can see, we are now able to see some shapes over here. You can also change this to shape if you want. And I'm pulling in on the color shelf, the min max profit that we just created on the detail shelf, the year of the order date. As you can see now, uh, the values are color coded based on the min and max value. And the ones that are not minimum and maximum are color coded as red. You can change the colors based on your requirements. So right now I'm uh, coloring the max values as green, the minimum value as uh, red and any as blank. As you can see, because the bubbles um, color is white, it looks like there 
there is like a broken line over there so what i'm going to do is i'm also pulling the min max onto shape and now i'm giving the min and max value a circle however for the other value i'm just creating a quick um, circle over here in presentation um, where i'm not going to fill this with any shape so once this shape is ready we'll go ahead and save this to your tableau repository I'm right now saving this under the gender folder. Make sure this is a .png file. You can reload your shapes and assign this to your NA. So once you do that, when you hit OK, you will see the broken lines gone and only now the minimum and the maximum values uh, have those bubble charts. You can duplicate this sheet further. And now everything that we just did for sum of profit is what we are going to replicate for sum of sales so everything would be same only your min max calculation would change here so instead of min max profit i'm just updating this to show me sales value uh, and then i'm going to pull this again onto anywhere where i had the earlier calculation for the profit so as you can see again uh, my line chart is created with which highlights the maximum and the minimum value and you can quickly update the colors and the shapes as we just did in the previous section. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. I'll just quickly move on to the next sheet now. So again, duplicate the sheet for the quantity thread uh, and you can follow exactly the same process as we did for the previous two charts that we have just created so that even the quantity trend can be created. We'll need the minimum and the maximum quantity calculation again for this so just go ahead and update it and replace it on your second marks card wherever you were using the earlier calculations update the shapes again once the shapes are updated and the colors are updated as well your chart should be ready for the quantity trend so i'm just going to rename that so as you can see uh, some of our charts are ready especially the ones from the kpi section We'll create a new workbook for profit versus sales for which I'm pulling the sum of profit onto columns and sum of sales onto rows. Now from the product, I'm going to cut the product name onto the details shelf. As you can see by each of the different products, you can see the profit and the sum. I also want to pull in the profit ratio, which is nothing but the sum of profit upon sum of sales onto my color shelf. As you can see, we can see each and every product what's the profit and what was the sale you can also flip the axis over here to show the profit versus sales instead of some sales versus profit and you can hide and drop any grid lines zero lines and fit this to an entire view as you can see now that i have the product name on the detail shelf just in case if i want to have any other dimension on it i would have to pull this on my detail shelf what if we could create a field uh, a parameter through which we could change this value so in this section now we'll talk about how you can do that so let's go ahead and create one parameter i'm going to call this as dimension switch this is going to be a string value which is going to have some list values so we have got our product name region city subcategory ship mode and segment finally customer name and click on ok now we need to create a calculation on this dimension switch parameter we just created so go ahead click on create calculated field let's call this as dimension switch and we'll say if the dimension switch value is equal to product name then we'll use the product name field else if the dimension switch value is region then we'll use the region field and so on and so forth we'll go ahead and update this calculation to make sure that each and every value in the parameter is mentioned here in the calculation as well once this is updated you can click on ok and now pull in the parameter we just created onto the sheet by right clicking on dimension switch and show parameter as you can see, when you switch between your different dimensions, your chart would now start to update. With that, all our sheets are ready and now we can head towards creating our dashboard. For which I'm going to add the dashboard and then I'm going to resize this. 
I'm using the generic desktop size over here and updating the height of the dashboard. Now we are good to go ahead and begin to add the dashboard title. Here I'm going to update this and call this as a business dashboard. Changing the font and making sure that this is a specific color that I'm looking for and also giving it a proper shading of black. Now as you can see, this is our dashboard. I'm going to shade it in a, in a light gray and give it a border as well, which is a very thick border. The next step for us is to pull in an object, which is a blank object onto the dashboard. This will just add as a guiding uh, place for us. So I've now pulled in the profit versus sales and I'll just pull in the dimension switch and the legend to the bottom. As you can see, this is the space where we can put in all the KPIs for which I'm pulling in a horizontal or a vertical container. Next, I'll pull in the profit, the total sales and the total quantity next to each other. Once this is done, I'll pull in a container over here, which is a horizontal container and in which I'll put in the profit. Next, I'll pull in the KPI sheet that we have just created, the trend sheet and we'll hide the titles over here and also make sure that the extra container that has got added to the end is removed. Once that is done, I'll do some basic formatting to this container to make sure that the container is of a specific size, has enough padding and the KPI values is easily visible. So I'll do that and I will also make sure that there is no gap between these two sheets. So as you saw, I reduced the outer padding and the inner padding from uh, the left and the right side respectively. Now I'll similarly hide the titles for the other two sheets and I'll pull in a vertical container again, resize this, pull in the total sales into the container, move the sales trend to the right, hide the title for it, make sure that the container on the right is also hidden. I'll distribute all the sheets accordingly so that it's evenly distributed and I'll go ahead and apply a similar padding to the sheets as well and reduce the outer paddings for the left and the right sheet so that there is no gap between these two sheets. And exactly similar to the above two, we'll do the same for the total quantity, changing the paddings and making sure all the sheets are properly aligned. So now that we have all the sheets on the dashboard, we also want to make sure that uh, the title of the sheet is properly updated for which I'm going to go ahead and edit this. I'm just giving it a tableau bold and clicking on OK. I'm putting in the dimension switch on top over here. So when I'm changing it, I think I want to also show my title uh, with that value. So I'm going to say profit versus sales by the dimension switch parameter that we have. So so every time now that you make a switch between your parameter, your title is also going to update with that, which is a good functionality to have. You can also go ahead and add legends for your ears because it's not very clear what the gray line and the black line is suggesting. So I'm also going to add this on my dashboard. You can place it at the bottom, hide the title or also place it on the top, arrange this in a single line so that it's nice and simple. Uh, spread across and just reduce the size so that it fits in well. Uh, you can update it and move it as you would like to. And now finally, let's also just do a few more changes over here. I want to have these KPI charts with a little bit of shading at the bottom. So as you can see, I'm color coding these sheets and also introducing some borders at the bottom. Actually not borders, but some padding at the bottom, which gives it a shading effect and it really makes a little bit of difference on your dashboard. It gives it a little bit of an aesthetic touch and why not if you could do something like that with just a few clicks. So once you are done that for all of the different sheets, you can also do it for your major sheet, which is your profit versus sales and make sure that it's also in line and looks exactly how the other side of the KPI dashboard looks like. So I'm just making a few edits to it as well. Now I also want to have some icons for my KPIs for which I'm coming back to presentation and going to pull in a few icons over here. As you can see, once I've pulled in all the icons, I'm going to save it in my Tableau repository. Like you are aware from my previous videos of how we can save these different icons. Uh, once you save this onto your Tableau repository, make sure that this is a PNG extension. 
so that the background could be leveraged as transparent so once you've saved all of this add an image container and choose these files onto your dashboard and you can adjust this just on top of your kpi so that they are properly aligned and are available on top of each of the different kpis once all these three shapes are added to your three kpis you'll see a little bit more meaning to your kpis as well once you have it here uh, I really like to use some kinds of infographic and shapes on my dashboard and that's why you'll see an element of it every time I'm here. Once everything is done, you can see how your dashboard is interacting. You can use different parameters over here to switch. You can use each of these different bubbles on the right side to filter and look at your KPIs on the left. This is up to you. How do you want to enable filtering on your dashboard? Once all of this is ready, I will say your business dashboard is ready within 15 minutes. I hope that this was a good video where you learned how to create a simple looking business dashboard with some KPIs, some infographics and some really nice interactive features like your parameter switching. Please do not forget to like the video if you are watching up till this point. Do also subscribe to my channel. I'll keep coming up with a lot of good videos that all of you professionals could really make use of. With that, I'll sign off and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.